So instead of using all those arcades, we're going to use something that is called full body arcade. Now I'm pretty sure you don't have this noted immediately because it's an add-on for control rig. It's the add-on for our add-on. So we have to go to edit um, plugins and type in full body IK. You enable it. You probably have to restart the editor, do that and come back. And then you will have this full body IK note here, which we're going to use instead of this other IK setup. Why? Because this full body IK will have this whole character as a single IK chain, uh, meaning the head and the body will be, uh, the head and the pelvis will be connected. Yeah, and we don't get like this offset here. This offset here where it stretches the neck will not happen because the pelvis will follow the neck just as the other way around. So let's just skip this here. We're plugging this in here and move this a little bit down here. Now, while this node is amazing, I think it's relatively performance heavy. So be aware of that. And um, it's a little bit, well, convoluted. I wish you could uh, like uh, skip it and uh, make snippets of it, like separate it a little bit. But okay, first of all, we have to set up the root. Now, this is pretty straightforward. Just put in the root. Now we have effectors, constraints, other stuff as well. I don't want to cover the other stuff for now. I want to focus on the uh, effectors first of all. So hit plus, so we get one effector. What is a effector? A effector is just like we had in this IK here, um, the thing that's actually offsetting everything, okay? So like the control. First effector we want, first we unfold the item and we set up which bone should follow. We don't have to set up uh, multiple bones for our IK because everything is already one IK. If we set up here, let's say, first of all, the pelvis, the pelvis should be probably first. The order, I think, doesn't matter in which order you place them, but just for our logic reasons, the pelvis is the first one we're going to use. And the pelvis should just simply be the pelvis. So we're going to grab the pelvis and we're just going to unfold this here and rotation and the translation. We don't really need the scale. The scale doesn't really matter to us. And don't crash, please. All right, so again, um, instead of plugging this in directly now, uh, I'm going to disconnect this. This sometimes helps a little bit. Actually, I don't have that many crashes with a full body, body IK. The bones were far worse. Position uh, and rotation in here because we want the pelvis to just stay the pelvis. And we're going to now plug this in here. I'm going to save here and compile. All right, now we are working. Now we want to put in the other effectors like the hands and um, feet here. So let's just hit plus four times two, three, four. And this node is going to be very, very long. Okay, this is just how it is. I would orientate or try to orientate on, on the numbers, then you know in which section you are. And the first one, we're going to put in the foot underscore L. And in the second one, we're going to put in the foot underscore R. And in the third one, we're going to put in actually, and here we want to actually use the bones. I'm not so sure why, merely, barely a try and error thing, um, more or less, because the works themselves, uh, the, 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 because the bones themselves, they don't, I don't know, they're just janky. But here we want to use the bones. Um, here we want to use the index, and uh, here on item 4 we want to use the other index. Now it's completely breaking, this is just because all of those positions are currently at zero. We need to put in our uh, transforms. So we just go down here and we grab the controls in this case. So this is index L, get, where's index L? Index L is here. We want to get the foot L, get foot L is here. We want to get the foot R, where's foot R? Foot R is here. And we want to get the index R, get it. So, and then we're going to plug all of this in. So unfold it, rotation, and you can see he's at least back to its default pose. Now we could um, grab those controls and move them and you can see he's kind of bending and whatever. The reason, I mean, guess the feet will work. The feet will work to some extent, but you can see it's all one chain. It's all working together. And you can see the pelvis is at least offsetting more or less right. The reason why it's bending up here is because it has no hold up here. It doesn't know where it should like put this here. There's no effector. So meaning we need to also get an effector for the neck because the feet are connected to the pelvis and we set the pelvis already. Yeah, the pelvis is in place holding itself. But the arms go up here and don't know where to hold. So we need to hit another effector here, another plus, and we need to get the neck first of all. So neck, we need the effector for the neck, which is the control here. Get uh, unfold this rotation, translation, and we will already see we have a lot more hold here now if we move this, yeah? See this? While everything is kind of um, moving slightly with it, this is actually what we want. 
it's uh, usually giving pretty decent results. And we also want to do the same thing for the head. It just gives a little bit of extra hold if we also do the head. So let's just hit another effector here. Unfold this to the head. Let's also get the head control here. Get it, unfold it, rotation, translation. And there we go. So now, just as we did before with this IK here, we want to offset the foot, offset the other foot, offset the leg, offset the other leg. Uh, all we need is copy those two here. This is the foot L. Or foot L here. Foot L, foot L, foot L. So foot L, let's drag this a little bit out. Paste this in. We just have to unfold this here. Plug in the Z and plug in the Z. And the rotation stays, but we have to unfold the uh, position. So we can plug in X, Y, and our added Z. That's all it really is. And I'm going to do this for the other ones as well. Let's move this a bit back here. We have some space. All right, so with that, we are offsetting now all of our bones. Let's just take a look here. If we're walking, slow mo on, and we can see it's technically working. The hands are always on the ground, even over here now, on the ground, feet on the ground, and our neck is still broken. And that is because we are offsetting it up here. We're not actually offsetting it within the IK chain. So we just, instead of doing this here, we just need to copy this here, the whole neck part, and we go down here to our neck, and we're going to simply add this over here. Unfold this, add that to it, fold this here, X to X, Y to Y, no one use it. And um, we, since we also have a um, um, effector for the head, we need to do the exact same thing for the head as well, so the head gets the exact same offset. So we just unfold this here, copy another add here, we can just drag this in here, hold position, x to x, y to y, and our new z, and there we go. Now let's take a look here. Now you can see he's not like uh, extremely stretching his neck anymore because everything is related to each other. Of course it's clipping, this is because we still need interpolate, but you can see, he, especially here, it's not like stretching and the pelvis is bound to the head and the other way around as well. And you can see a little bit of clipping here. Uh, the main reason for that is because it loses the, tra uh, the trace. Um, basically, if we go over here to our traces for the hands. Hands. It's not far enough down. I can show you this a little bit better if we just hit play here, go to our debug here, and we take a look at the hands. Uh, we're running here. Wait, let me reposition this a bit better. So. And when we are running, you can see where the hit result here on the arms. Take a look at our uh, hands. Where the hit result on the hands is. Yeah. So if it's higher, it's going to add on it. And if we're walking down, we are basically losing the tracking result. The distance is to the distance to the ground is too great to be traced. So all we have to do is increase the trace distance to the bottom here. So minus seventy five. It's kind of depending on how big your character is and on the which angle you stand. Just make both minus two, uh, 75, that worked pretty great for me. You could probably calculate it based on the character size, but a lot of unnecessary calculations which need to be done in real time. But you can see with a greater trace distance, uh, he's not like snapping anymore. This is already the basic IK system, really. It's, uh, that's all it is, basically. There's still more we can do, and I kind of went overkill with my one, so we'll see how far we go with that. But yeah, let's rename a few things. This stuff in the back here we don't need. I mean, if you want to remember it, you can probably make a, a frame for it or whatever. Now, you might be asking, why don't we offset the pelvis here yeah, instead of doing it up here? Actually, I don't know, okay? It's just that it doesn't work in here. Honestly, not sure. So I'm going to just move this over here. Let's rename this stuff maybe. This is here. Trace index. L, trace index R, trace foot, let's go L, whatever, trace foot R. Uh, and here we're just simply setting, setting space, spaces to bones, setting spaces to bones. All right. And here we just simply offset, pe offset pelvis to lower foot. That's essentially what we're doing here. So a few side notes to the IK, full body IK here. After the whole section with the effectors, right? These are all of our effectors, 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 effectors. And then there are the constraints. Now let's make a few constraints together. Constraints is just what it says. It's constraining something to something. Yeah, it's just limiting something. If you have the constraints, it's working like the 
effectors, you have basically numbers here, right? So if you hit plus here, you could get uh, more effectors, zero, one, etc. If you want to remove one, you can click, right click on a pin, either duplicate, which is also sometimes pretty handy, or remove, and then the one will be gone. What do I want to constrain here, first of all? Let's start with the legs, actually. And what I want to constrain are the legs down here. So basically like calf. The calf L first. And I want to constrain one of those axes. The linear linear stands for a position. Angular stands for the rotation. We don't really want to limit the position, we want to limit the rotation. If we take a look at our skeleton here at the calf, we can see the axis. And I want it to rotate a lot around X, right? And that's just how the foot works. Um I want to rotate it not maybe, maybe a little bit around Y, maybe not even, and definitely not around X. So I'm going to limit y and x here. Let's go back to our setup here. And limit y and x means just putting in a one. It makes it far more stiff and it will not allow as much stretching on x and y. But that should be a lot. You could also use limits, so absolute limits. For me, those didn't work very great, honestly. So I don't recommend you using them at the moment. You can also use a pole for the IK. No, not sure. Um, you could probably set up a pole, so if you have the wrong direction bending, you could set up a manual pole for a calf. And now, since we have set up the calf as we wanted to, we can right click on this here and duplicate the ray element, zooming out and in, and we have the one down here and the item where we have the calf L, and I'm just going to switch this to the calf R. Now we should make sure in the skeleton tab here on the calf R that we have the same axis. Uh, probably we will have, they're just flipped. Still don't want to rotate around Y and still don't want to rotate around X. So that is fine. So same angular limits here. And you could probably, if you wanted to uh, set this up for the arms as well, but you would probably need to use the upper arm and the lower arm for that. You can take a look what I did in my file here. What I did is the hand, yeah, and the lower arm. Yeah, I, I did them all manually and just checked in the skeleton which axis I want to like limit more or less. It's just basic based on logic. Like, do I want to rotate the hand a lot around this one here? Probably not that much, maybe a little bit. Do I want to rotate a little bit here? Maybe a 0.5 or so. And probably a lot here, so zero on Y. But this is up to you to decide. Uh, generally speaking, it's already working pretty well. It's just a fine tuning, I guess. Then I want to go over the motion properties. There we have a thing called force effector rotation target. If we uncheck this, a lot of rotations, especially the end rotations, this is what it means, the end rotations of all the chains, yeah, so like the last tail, each individual eye, because the eye doesn't have anything to hold, it's the end of the chain, the end of the year. If we now uncheck this, hit compile, and we walk around, the eyes and stuff will probably freak out as soon as we walk on something. Probably not that much. Oh. When I did this earlier, it kind of freaked out for me. You would probably need to... Um, manually limit or set effectors for each for each uh, end bone. Actually doesn't seem to break that much, interesting. For me the eyes were like totally broken. It's just depending on what you want, I guess. You can see it's also a little bit wiggly. Let's just check this again, compare this. You can see he's far less wiggly. So it's kind of depending on what you want. Also the fingers are also all end effectors, which wouldn't be fixed without this option. You can do it manually, um, but not always that reasonable. So next thing I want to do is rotate the fingers to the ground. Now while on a straight floor, it might just be fine uh, because this is how we animate it on a straight floor. Um, it should be fine. But if we go up here, come on, we can see actually here it's working as well um, because it's still straight. Yeah, we're fixing all the other axes so it's still straight, but um, it can look a little bit more cleaner. Um, and I'm still going to show it anyway. So what we want to do is grab all of our fingers here. So let's go all the way up. Let's start with the left hand, the left yeah, fingers here. Just grab all of them, create a collection. And we're going to do this after the IK because the IK is doing stuff and then we want to override it with whatever we're doing here. Uh, in order to rotate the fingers to the ground, we need something else. And this something else is the hit normal of each hand. Yeah? 
Now we could obviously trace each finger individually and then rotate it to each finger individually. This would make it far more accurate, but instead I'm just going to rotate all of them to this one location we have here. So maybe I'm going to do it on a humanoid as a pretty cool setup. I have something in mind there, but for now, I'm just going to rotate them all the same to the ground. So we want to store this. Uh, let's go to the, my blueprint here. Why is it always switching? And we need to create a variable and we call this hit lock index L. And now, since this is a vector, we need a vector here as well. Let's make a vector out of it. Um, we can copy this, get R out of it, copy it, make a... Actually, we don't need the feed. Yeah, the feed we don't need because we don't have anything to rotate on the feed. So never mind, we don't need the index finger. Here we have the foot, we have the foot. So we want to store the hit normal of the fingers, not get set. And we're going to set this up here. Hit normal, plug this over here, the R, set it. And with that, we are storing which angle the normal on the ground below the hand looks at. So now to rotate this, we're going to use something called aim. And this will um, allow us to aim bones on a certain axis to something. This is also pretty great. I have this on my um, school girl. I can show you really quick. Oh, this was, I built this rig quite a lot earlier when I didn't know that much. But uh, I set this up. So basically the eye bones are aiming at this thing here and the head bone is aiming with its axis onto that thing here. And this is essentially what we're doing now. Just that we're aiming the fingers to the ground. So we just need to get up for each item here. For each item. So we can do it for all the fingers. Plug this in here and in here. So for each item. For all of those items. And here we see the target. What is the target? Now the target is the stored value here. We are using the hand L right now. So let's get the index L here. Get it. This is the target compile and you can see it's kind of closed and um, this is relatively reasonable but we can see it's not open it's like looking in the wrong direction so we have to just unfold the uh, axis here and we have to check which axis we're using so one might not be it minus one minus one also doesn't look right i mean we can just check go to skeleton mesh and let's just uh, look for one of our fingers index i guess and if we go here we want to aim the z at the ground yeah so let's go back here and we want to aim Z to the ground. And then we can so see the fingers are the same as on the ground. If we now walk, something isn't quite right here. For some reason I use minus Z. I'm not so sure why I did that. Apparently I had some problem with that. Minus Z. Oh, right, 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 right. We have the secondary axis which is messing with us. Always hate that. Turn it off. Apparently this doesn't quite work. Let's use minus Z. You can just press shift F1. To leave this and change it here right now. Another thing is that we have location here, so we might want direction. No, we want direction, obviously. I don't know why Z looks, uh, minus Z looks better. But you can see it's perfectly sticking to the ground now. Again, we're using the items we want to um, rotate. Then we change the axis to, well, usually it's the axis it's actually pointing at, but apparently we need minus Z. And we're using direction here. We turned off the secondary weight. And that should be fine. And now the feet, uh, the finger will always rotate to the ground. You can see it, especially, okay, GeForce, go away. Especially here when we are like walking over the edge, it's like changing. A bit hard to see with all black, but basically the fingers are always rotated to the ground. Come on. You can see it's a little bit of a better rotation. Now the thing is though, we want to turn it off um, when it's when he's like standing, right? We don't always want to rotate the finger. But then we need to get the distance between the finger to the ground. And since we are, like I explained earlier, already in the root space, we can just, if we are above the root, we are on plus. If we're on the exact same height as the root, we're on zero. If we're below it, we're in minus. So we only need to get like the distance from this position to the root which is actually the position of the foot itself, uh, of the uh, index itself. So all we really need to do, I get the index uh, L and we just need to get the Z height. Why only the Z height? Because if this one moves down, it's going to get smaller, 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 smaller. And where we are on the ground, it's going to be zero. So we just need to plug this into the weight compile. And if we're now walking, not quite right. Um, there's a problem with that because currently up here, we can actually right click this here. Can we watch this value? Nope. We have to use an add here. This will make things easier for us into the weight because in the, to the weight, if you can see, turn this to 0.5. It's just how much it's affecting it. Zero will be off. One will be on. 
Um, let's plug this into the weight and we can right click this add here and watch this value. And we can see the default we have is 18. Let's hit compile here, let's hit play and go over here to our debug and change it to our mesh so we can actually see the value as we run. Yeah, we now go uh, in slow-mo, we can see, okay, we are sometimes on minus two apparently um, up to our uh, 20 maybe. All right, so what we want to do is remap this. Remap and we want to remap this. So when it's 18, it should be off, meaning it should be zero. When it is zero, because it's closer to the ground, it should be one and turned on. So if we now plug this in here, you can see it's closing, but if we move the effector down, it's going to open up because it's closer to the ground. Yeah. And now if we run, you can see it's closer to the ground, so it's opening up. It's going to get further away, so it's closing, it's going to get closer again, it's opening up. And same thing here. Okay, yeah, we have to fix this with a jump a little bit then. But here the same thing, closer to the ground, further to the ground, and it's turning off. It's a bit very hard to see with a black butt. All right, uh, save this, and we're going to do the same thing for the other hand, so copy this over. And remember, whenever you use a loop, and your loop is over, you don't want to actually connect this from here, because then it's a loop inside a loop, you want to use the complete here. Um, we can just right click this here, hope it works, uh, underscore L to underscore R. Uh, Apparently not, okay. I guess it's easier if we just create this new, look at our fingers here, um, over here, create collection, plug this in here, and we need the other normal here, not the L, we need the R normal, get, plug it into the target, compile, and we need to change this as well, index R1, 1R, one, one R. compile, let's just check this out really quickly, seems to just work fine, um, that's fine. And we got already rotations for the fingers as well. So now one additional thing I want to do really quick because it's not that hard to do is um, when he's like looking up, right? Uh, looking up at an angle or something, the head should turn a little bit up. He shouldn't like look straight at the ground here. And if we're looking down, yeah, that is another thing we have to fix. But if he's looking down, he should rotate his head a little bit down. So in order to do that, we're also going to store the hit normal of the feet because right here we stored the hit normal, right? So we can rotate the fingers, but we didn't do this for the feet because we don't actually need to rotate anything on the feet. So let's just copy this in and rename this hit normal put underscore L, copy paste it. And this is going to be the R. And let's just set this really quick. Uh, set, is this the R, this is the R, this is the L. Set, plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. Now we're going to store the normals here as well. Nothing special. And now, like I said, we want to rotate the head. For that, we essentially use the same setup again, though. I'll just get an aim. And we want to rotate the head bone. Primary is just fine for now. Which axis do we want? Let's take a look at our head here. Um, we want the minus x. The minus x. Because it's looking down, right? The x is looking up. The minus x is looking down. Uh, so minus x. There we go. The target. Um, well, let's do the rest of first. Um, we don't want the location, we want the direction, and we want to turn off the secondary axis here because it's just messing with, with us. Uh, currently, we don't have a proper target. For the target, what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of our hit locations. Get, 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 get. Now, you probably could use just the fingers or something, but I'm going to do this with all of them. We're going to get an average, an average value between all of those depending on where all of them together look. He's looking a little bit up or down or whatever. Uh, I think it's a better solution than just taking one or two. So what we can do is we can just add them all together. Like we're gonna add, we're gonna add, add them together again. So we get the overall value. And then we can just use a so-called unit. I think this is what it's normalizing, isn't it? Returns the normalized value, that's what we want. Okay, normalized. Um, it's basically this high value, this gigantic value is just normalized to like zeros and ones as far as I understand it or whatever. So now we can afford this here and we can get a, well, let's just plug this in first of all, to the X uh, into the target and something is off. Apparently I want to use X here. I mean, it's looking directly in the other direction, so apparently I want the X. Uh, let's just take a look how it looks like. Let's walk around here. Let's walk on our angle. And we can see he's looking up. Now he's looking a little bit sideways. Don't worry about the pelvis. We're fixing this in a, uh, the, the spine. We're fixing this later. And he's looking down. He's looking up. He's looking a little bit sideways. Um, 
No, this is not quite correct. When he's looking, when he's standing on um side him, the head should actually look in the other direction because he's like countering out the weight, the, the position. And I don't want him to like fully straight look all the way up and I don't want him to fully straight look all the way down. So I'm just going to put in three multiply here. Multiply, multiply, multiply. So we can play a little bit with those values. Plug this in here, plug this in here, X, Y, Z. Why are you breaking? Ah, oh, because I plugged it into it. Oh my god. Of course. Holding control. So, that's what I wanted. So now um, we are hitting play. Walk over to our angle here. And we're looking a little bit sideways. Can press shift F1. And we can take a look over here. And we're just testing it. We want to flip out one axis. That's not what I wanted to flip. Minus one. This is what I wanted to flip, but I don't want it all the way. So instead of a minus one, I'm going to give it a minus point three. So, so he's just angling out the head a little bit. Y is probably this one here, I'm guessing. Let's see. Pop and make it weaker, point three. Yeah, maybe, maybe a point four. And he's looking down. Z is probably not as relevant, honestly. Yeah, Z doesn't matter to us right now. Essentially, we get the head we want. Now we want to fix the, the, the weird bending here right now. 